Come on, give us a smile. <laughs> oh. Lizzie McGuire, you are an outfit repeater. Gather round, children, and let me tell you the tale of how I turned my husband into a bear. No, not sorcery, just costuming. Yeah, I spent the past week making a bear suit, a mostly full bear suit, for my six foot five husband. It's a lot of fabric. Some friends of ours were hosting a Lord of the Rings themed party, complete with quests and dueling and like full storylines and everything. And they wanted Charles to play Bayorn, Bjorn. I don't know how to say his name. I heard everyone pronouncing it differently throughout the run of the party, but they reached out to me to see if I would make his costume, not just as a human, human, his human form, but also as a bear. And being the procrastinator that I am, along with just not really getting much information until this month, I had four days to make it. And thus begins the tale of the biggest sewing challenge I have taken on to date, and not just because of the height. I started off with Bayorn's human form costume since it's pretty straightforward and was of less consequence than the bear suit. Mostly I needed to mimic his sweater vest-like tunic, which looks like it's woven together from various found threads. This oatmeal colored sweater that I had in a giveaway bag was the perfect base for it. To create a more cobbled together look, I used this fake spiderweb Halloween decoration and split it into long strands. It was one of those dollar section at Target purchases that I regretted, but thankfully it ended up being useful after all. I first secured the edges so the sweater wouldn't unravel, then wove the pieces through the sweater lengthwise at random intervals. So here's where I'm at with Charles's human form costume. So these pants I just picked up at, oh sorry if you can hear my stomach. <laughs> um, so these pants I just picked up at the thrift store, same with this belt. I believe in the movie Bayorn wears a lighter colored belt, but I like that this contrasted with the sweater that I had to work with. So the sweater, obviously I cropped off the sleeves and the hood, and then I've just been weaving all of these different fibers in and out of it. I have more fibers that I want to add, and I would like to add grommets to the front, or at least some kind of lace-up situation. But I'm gonna pause on the human costume for now and shift tracks, jump tracks, shift gears? Shift gears, that's the metaphor I'm looking for. Because I now have about four days to make a bear suit. So if he has to wear the human form costume as it is right now, that'll be fine. That's not what matters as much as the bear costume because that's part of a whole skit or quest that they're doing at the party. So I really just need to plug away at that for the next few days and if I have time, I'll add those final touches on the human suit. Human suit, human costume. I have always struggled with being a serious procrastinator and on the one hand the pressure really does help me focus and get things done but at what cost you know is all the caffeine consumption really worth it so where i'm going to start with the bear suit or approximation of a bear suit is this fur vest it was just a little bit too small for charles i mean it's a women's small but it's like an oversized fit so lengthwise it was actually fine but obviously width wise he was busting out of it so i'm gonna cut it up the back add a panel there to add width um i might also open the tops of the shoulders here and that'll open up the armhole and then from there see if i can add sleeves and probably also a hood of some type to become the head rather than having a separate headpiece. I don't know, we'll see where it goes. And normally, as many of you probably know, I do not like using hot glue for fabric projects, but um, I just subjected my machines to a glitter fabric. I don't know if I want to subject them to faux fur. And I have less than four days, so hot glue might be the move here. I was fortunate to find this faux fur vest and a bunch of faux fur fabric, whew, that was a tongue twister, at the thrift store earlier this month, which really helped to cut down on the overall cost. Since all the fabric I found ended up being black, I just rolled with it and decided that our bear would be a black bear. And I did end up doing most of this project on my sewing machine after all, since the fabric wasn't as difficult as I anticipated. I did not, however, press and finish my seams, which honestly saved a lot of time. 
It looks messy on the inside, but it's a costume, so it's fine. This is what I finished on day one, tackling the bear suit. This is approximately six to six and a half hours of work. So we're not off to a bad start. On day two, I got to work creating the head of the suit. All right, let's see it with the hood up. Does it actually cover your head? Actually, that's not bad. No, so it makes me feel a bit like the Revenant. If you hold it closed in the front, how much extra? <laughs> okay, so these are not little girl's hair clips. These are where I need to take it in. Yeah. <laughs> you look so unhappy. Is it itchy? To make the ears, I just copied a design I found on Pinterest, but let me tell you, searching up design inspiration for various parts of a bear suit or searching the term bear costume yields some interesting results that I did not want, and now I'm pretty sure Google thinks I'm some kind of deviant. So I didn't really get that much done today. I made and attached the hood and then took that in where that needed to be taken in. I just added some darts all the way around the face and I also started on the ears. I think I need to make it a little bit smaller though. So this will kind of get folded together at the bottom and then attached to the hood. But I feel like that's a little big. Even as big as Charles is, it just feels a little bit too big. So I'm gonna make them a little bit smaller. I don't love the ears, but Honestly, I'm on a time crunch, it'll have to do. And then I just had to be honest with myself that I did not have enough fabric left to even begin to make pants. So we went out to the craft store today and the only place that had faux fur was Joann's and it was $75 for two yards of fabric. What? Oh, what's that sound? Oh, that's just my soul leaving my body. <sighs> so today's goals are figure out the paw hand situation and make some headway with the muzzle. So I'm only gonna make a partial mask. I want Charles to still have as much visibility and range of vision as possible. So I'm just gonna do a half mask on the bottom part of his face. So I'm going to try creating that shape with manila folder. Oh, that made the white balance like really pink. Yeah, I'm just gonna use a manila folder and try to shape it sort of to what I need and um, yeah, go from there. I don't- I have no idea what I'm doing. Let's backtrack to the ears real quick though, which I attached with hot glue. I finally found black hot glue that's meant for fabric. <laughs> then it was on to the paws. This part was highly experimental and I'm just really glad my design worked out. I wanted them to be a separate piece from the suit so that Charles would still have full range of motion in his wrists, and I also wanted them to have an opening in case he needed to use his hands. I added elastic at the cuff to keep them snug and secure. Now on to the bear mask. I kind of can't accurately describe what I did. I kind of just futzed around with the folder pieces until they looked vaguely muzzle shaped and then began covering them with fabric. I created a lining layer made from an old pair of sweatpants so that the mask would be a little bit more comfortable. And again, I kind of just started covering the mask with fabric, starting with this tan colored felt that I distressed to make the pieces blend together a little bit better. I then added two pieces of elastic to go around the back and the top of the head. Thank you. 
I'm covered in faux fur. It's like in my eyeballs. So I managed to get the mask almost done tonight. You might be like, um, the nose is not done. And that is correct. I still need to get Charles to 3D print me one. He has a 3D printer. And then I'll attach that and finish up the fur around the tip of the nose. Unfortunately, Charles is not here to try on the mask, so I don't actually know if it'll fit him. I'm hoping it does. I tried to add a little bit extra when I was fitting it on myself just because his head is a little bit bigger than mine. Hopefully all that would need to be done, if anything, is letting out the elastic a little bit and there should be enough to be able to do that. So I think what I'm gonna finish up for tonight is I'm just gonna paint the inside of the mask black. I didn't think I was going to, but it does kind of bug me that the manila folder is visible. And then I'm actually gonna add black fur to the inside of the ears. I thought that the brown felt would look good, but it just looks like a teddy bear and that bugs me. So I'm just gonna make it all black fur. All right, y'all, time to make some giant bear pants for my giant of a husband. With the pants assembled, I attached them to the top half of the suit and added a little secret pocket inside for good measure. So it's like a onesie that you step into. Is it this <laughs> no, way or? No, that's Sorry. the arms. This is this is the front. So when you step into it, with the hood up, how does everything sit? Can how can you move? Mm -hmm. Pretty okay. To do this, it's pulled up here, but. Okay, I mean, are you really going to need to go much higher than that? I don't have to. Do you have any booty room? Oh yeah, there's lots of booty room. I'll give you a nice bare butt. Okay, on, I'm going to trim some stuff while it's on you. Yeah, you're kind of, there's a very skinny bear. <laughs> oh, now your face is crooked. Now we're down to those last few changes and details to pull it all together. This included painting and attaching the nose, adding some shading to the muzzle, and adding a segment of fabric to the center front of the suit to create a more rounded stomach. I added generic brand Velcro as the closure up the front. It also just occurred to me that I forgot to give him a tail. Anyway. Our bear was still looking a little lanky though, so I used pieces from an old mattress topper to pad out the bum and the belly. I could only add a little bit of padding, however, otherwise it would restrict Charles's movement too much. The bear suit is done. It's finally done. With mere hours to spare before the party, I returned to the human form sweater for a few final details. All total, I spent about $100 on supplies for the bear suit and spent around 21 hours constructing it. This was by far the wildest and most challenging sewing project I've taken on to date, so let's see how it held up.
looking for honey. <laughs> no, this was not sorcery. This was costumery. I don't think that's a word. That's really crooked.